All right, hello. What's up? I'm gonna be talking about just the thoughts that I have regarding this hysterectomy slash ophorectomy coming up. Um, today's Wednesday, and the surgery is on Wednesday, next Wednesday. And I just been having like a lot of thoughts. Um, I had a consultation, and like just saying yes, like putting a date on paper or like in the system, like in my head that I'm gonna have a surgery on a specific day just makes it more real and it just yeah so i've just been telling people like my family and i guess hearing their concern about me doing it it does get in my head um hearing other people just the world and even myself right because let's forget other people for a second i also care about me right like i know people around me care about me but i also care about me like i also want to live healthy and i also like this is the vessel that i'm giving i'm the one that's gonna have to live in it I want to make sure that I'm good. So I say all that, I say all that just to say like yes, my family and others like gets in my head and I hear what y'all say, but I also hear what I say and this is what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about my own inter internal dialogue and like my own thoughts. So literally, it's getting closer as y'all know. So like I guess the thoughts are just ramping up. So I'm just like thinking about like the fact that I'm not gonna have any. I'm not going to be able to produce anything naturally, like no estrogen naturally. Like I don't, I'm not going to produce a hormone because I'm getting my ovaries out as well. And my doctor had said that, um, hold on y'all. My doctor had said, you know, I, I was asking, one of the things I went in with was to keep my ovaries. And my doctor said, just take them out. Well, it, she would advise to take them out. She's had people that haven't, but she said it makes sense just to do it because down the line, I'm not saying I'm going I'm to get cancer, but you never know. Um, might get ovarian cancer, have to take them out anyways, or just me being on testosterone and putting my body through other stuff is just going to like deteriorate them or just not be a happy place for them to live in. Um, but yeah, and honestly, my ovaries, I, I'm okay with taking them out because I think I mentioned before in my egg retrieval surgery, like I think my ovaries is what produces the eggs and I believe that they went into my ovaries to take the eggs out and I had like 20 something eggs. So anyways, my ovaries are like, they've been through it. So I feel them and I feel the stress they've been, even though it's been years since that surgery, I still feel the remnants. Does that make sense? Like they went through a process of being injected with these uh, hormones and steroids to make them grow crazy and to be able to harvest these eggs multiple eggs you get what i'm saying like usually when you get your period there's one egg right or something like that i think it's like one egg that gets for, like the one egg that becomes but i had like 20 of those i don't y'all understand what i'm trying to say like i had 20 times the amount of the normal female body per anyways so i guess my biggest concern is like how am i gonna feel and i've been like YouTubing other guys that have gotten in surgery, this specific surgery, a hysterectomy and an ovarectomy, because a lot of guys say that they got a hysterectomy, but they don't, they didn't get their ovaries out. So I'm like, okay, I want to know how someone that also got their ovaries out is navigating the world, how they feel, how's your mood, are you healthy, are you stable? So luckily, there's this one guy who reached out to me because he saw that I was doing the process and he'd already done it, and I believe he's got everything out. So he actually gave me a connection like if i have any questions about the procedure or just like anything in general like if i just need some assistance with just knowledge or anything told me to hit him up so i literally hit him up about an hour ago so i'm gonna see what he says i just, I just basically asked him like how do you feel having no estrogen in your body did your doctor tell you that you're okay to only be on testosterone and are you going to be happy and health or healthy and stable that way because yeah i i really care about that and then, too, I also have thoughts of just, like, do I need to do this? Like, I literally pray to God, like, God, if I don't need to do this, like, throw a gigantic sign in my face. And if I do need to do this, throw a gigantic sign in my face because I don't want to make a decision like this and I'm not 100% sure. Right now, I'm, like, 90% sure, but the other 10% is pretty loud right now um, just because, like, I mean, this is a major thing I'm doing. Why not think about it so deeply? You know what I mean? Like, I could just walk into it like, I know what I'm doing, but at the same time, I'm a human and I don't know, I don't have all the answers. And 
you know, some things are above me. Like, God has a plan for my life and whatever that is, you know. I don't know. Also, I feel like it's a little bit of internal, like, transphobia sometimes, too, which sounds crazy, but hear me out. Because, like, sometimes I'll just be like, why do I have to go through all this? Like, it's just so weird. Being trans is such a conflict. And, you know, my existence is a conflict within myself. Because really, you know, it's like, why do I have to do this? Why did I have to get top surgery? Why do I have, why do I have to keep doing these things? Like, what am I going to get out of this? But it feels also like the right path to do, which is so conflicting. Because one part of you just wants to be done it's like, why am I doing this? Like, why am I injecting myself? Why am I doing surgeries? Why have I made my my family call me a different name? Why, why, why? And then the other side of me is like, this is you. Do it, do it, do it. So it's like, it's very conflicting. And yeah, it's just weird. Because like I said, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing this. But it's not easy. And I think maybe that's where the confliction comes from too. Because all these things where I ask why, it's because it's not easy. It's not easy to, it's not easy to navigate life as a trans person. It's not. It's not. It's not easy to tell people that you're trans and then wonder how they're gonna react. It's not easy to be respected. So you, it's not easy to wait five years before you look. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not. It's not easy. It takes time. It takes time. It's not easy. It's really not easy. Then you get to a point on five years on T. Now there's more surgeries. It's not easy, but. It also feels right. And I guess that could be the same thing with like, for instance, school. I, school is hard. I often say, why? Why? Why am I doing this? I could be having free time. I could be hanging out with my girlfriend. I could be hanging out with my mom, my friends. I could be at the beach right now. I could be with my dog at the beach. I could be with my bunny in the sand. But I'm at my house on a computer learning and it's like i know i'm supposed to be doing it but it's just not easy so i guess that was a good like that's literally how i feel the same way about school is how i feel about this because like why is this hard why 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 but i feel like ultimately i'll be happier which is why i'm doing this is this is why i would even get a hysterectomy in the first place and ophorectomy i'm just speaking my mind though hopefully this helps someone because this is pre pre-surgery thoughts bro and yeah, you know, I, 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 but it's just, I think it's just, what also, what also is like very grueling inside is the fact that I don't know the outcome of these things. I wish I could know I'm going to be perfectly fine, healthy, happy. My level, my hormones are going to be fine. I'm not going to bald. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to maintain my, my essence. I wish I could know all these things. I wish I can. My body's gonna jump back quick. I wish I could know all these things, but I guess this is where faith comes in, right? I wish I knew that I had. I wish I could see the million dollar job, the million dollar job lined up after I get this degree. But I don't know that. My job is to just finish, finish, continue what I'm doing. And you know, some people might say, "Oh, surgery. You cannot compare getting surgery to school." I'm just telling you how my mind thinks. This is I'm I'm telling y'all this is this is how I see the two like those are pretty equal to me you feel me because there's sacrifices school is a sacrifice I can't do it I could do what I want but limited I gotta be home at five p.m. I got class I gotta wake up at this time I got class surgery I'm gonna be out for for a few weeks takes time and also I think that's also what gets me. This also happened to me. I haven't had surgery in a long time. My last surgery was the egg retrieval. I believe that was in 2022 or one. That was in, it was in 2021, late 2021. And so it's been three years. Yeah, like my last surgery was in September and it's September right now. So my last surgery was like three years ago. But it's just right, right before surgery, I remember I was in Mexico I was in Tijuana with my friends and my girlfriend. We went out there for a trip. And I knew that as soon as I came back to Cali, California, I had I had surgery. Or like, I didn't have surgery. I, when I came back to California, it was going to be the beginning of my process. Meaning, when I came back, I had stopped testosterone. I couldn't take any more shots. I knew that was my last 
taste for a while of being on testosterone and feeling like just feeling more energetic because I'm always myself right let's get that straight I'm always myself but it's just like am I the ideal highest like the ideal version of myself no when I'm not on testosterone and I think it's because I was on testosterone and then I was off of it if I were to never touch testosterone it would have been a different story but it was the fact that I was on tea for two and a half years and then I had to go off of it for three months two months three months whatever that's what made it you know what I'm saying it's like if you get a Lamborghini and then somebody repos your Lamborghini it hurts more because you had the Lamborghini you know what I'm saying like it would be different if you never got the Lambo like who cares I didn't even have the Lambo in the first place once you have it you're like this is like I got this and it's gone but that's that's things happen but you know what I'm saying but anyway the sale I have to say like with this surgery coming up I'm kind of sad but I'm like getting over it I'm, t I'm trying to be appreciative of it because, yeah, it's also a privilege. I know a lot of guys that wish they can have surgeries like this. But, yeah, I'm getting a little bit sad, right? I'm just like, yo, I'm going to be pretty sedentary, having to recover for like a week or two. No really crazy activity. Probably going to be in my house for the first week. Maybe step outside for some, well, obviously I'm going to step outside, but like in my backyard. That's why I did for top surgery. I didn't really go anywhere. I didn't really go anywhere. I would just be in my backyard trying to get some sun. Then I'll come inside, kick it, make YouTube videos, just do stuff like that. But I'm taking it as a blessing too because I have been doing a lot. Like I feel like I wake up and I just go. I, I don't wake up and I'm like chilling. I wake up and I'm like, all right, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. So it is gonna be nice to just wake up and be like, I need to stay in bed. Or I need to like lay on the couch today. Like I need to just sit down. So that is gonna be nice. Just sitting down, eating, doing my schoolwork, just chilling. Um, can't really do much. Maybe like cook some stuff, something really simple. You know what I mean? Just like in the house things. I'm not gonna be, you know, cutting down trees and running and bench pressing. I'm not doing that. So yeah, I'd say that's just the most that I struggle with. Is just like, it's just the mental preparation right now too. Just being like, you know, you're gonna be. You have to be on chill time. It's not forever. You can't do can't do anything. <laughs> can't do none of that, you know. But I can cuddle with my girlfriend, kind of, like not actually cuddle like sideways because I feel like that would hurt. Um, but just lay up. Uh, but I'll be fine. It's gonna be. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be similar to the egg retrieval as far as not being able to like lift or in top surgery too. Like yeah. But again, my surgeon said it's gonna be an easier recovery than top surgery. I I trust. But yeah, I just want to put this out there. Maybe it helps people, parents of trans people, non-trans people, cis people, trans people. Just understand the mind thing of it, right? Nobody is excited for surgery. Like, I'm not excited about the recovery. I'm not excited. Like, kind of like I said, how I'm trying to cope with it. I'm like, okay, I can show. But, like, it's not my... F like, I, I'm, that's not my first thing, you know, when I was 10 years old, I'm like, can't wait to get these surgeries. Like, no, it's just something I know I have to do. Um, and you're probably like, how do you know you have to do this? It's just an innate thing. It's like my mind, spirit, body, soul, essence. I just know I have to do this. And because I know there's more to come. Like, I've talked about bottom surgery, y'all. I, the, the bottom surgery process literally... Like, it was just so much for me. I didn't even want to go near it. But the more I lived and the more I've matured, I'm just like, yo. Like, two years ago, you asked me about bottom surgery. I'd be like, nah, I don't need that. Nah, 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 that's too much. That's so invasive. Blah, blah, blah. But then I also didn't have that much knowledge about it. And then I actually started looking up um, results and seeing results that I was like, that could be on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... You know, I always ask why, but I'm just hoping, I pray to God, after this is all said and done with everything, I'm going to understand why and it's going to be worth, worth my while, worth the sacrifice, worth everything that it has taken to affirm myself. But if you guys are wondering, um, I'm just thinking about when I was getting teary eyed because this is, is, it's a lot, man, like, it's not easy and it's not 
It's not easy, but I just know it's gonna help me in the long run. But it's not easy. But I, I knew I wanted bottom surgery for real. About um, maybe like six months ago, six seven months ago, earlier in the beginning of the year, like January. A little more than six months ago, I was um at school, and I had to use the restroom, and I had a friend at school. I'm not gonna name you, <laughs> but went to the restroom, and usually, I don't usually go to the restroom with like dudes. It's just weird. Like, if I'm hanging out with, like, my dad or, like, I have guy friends, like, I don't usually go to the restroom with them. Sometimes, but, like, anyways, this situation, uh, we went to this question, like, we were just chopping it up. We are going to walk to our next class together. I went to the restroom. He also went to the restroom. We had to go to the bathroom. You know, there was urinals. He just went there, did his business, and there was a stall. And something about the fact that I had to like go to a secluded stall to do my business just made me like so dysphoric. And like I just left the restroom. Like it was it wasn't bro at all. Like he didn't do anything. It's just me realizing like, oh my god. Like I don't wanna be you, but it's just like I think it's just because I like the way that I see the world and the way that I see myself is just so man like I'm just dude I also in other videos you can check out my video I said I'm a female man because I am but the female part is my anatomy right just like who I am um, inside the who who I am who I'm a female I have, I have what is it X Y chromosomes that's just me and the man part is my outer like that's 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 what I give off to the world I'm a man that's what I give off you know you're not gonna know that I'm a female but just looking at me you see man and it's just very incongruent when I know that's how I present and then I cannot operate like man you get me like like the voice operates like man the like the the body operates like man but then when it comes time to use the restroom, I cannot operate like man. And that's, that causes dysphoria for me. I don't think I really pinpoint my dysphoria, but I'm, I think it's necessary too to really get to the nitty gritty of why I choose to do these things like bottom surgery, blah, blah, blah. So the hysterectomy, ophrectomy is essentially the prerequisite to getting bottom surgery. Bottom surgery is a lot. I'm looking forward to the results. I'm looking forward to you know, having the privilege to just do what I want to do the way I want to do it with my with my own body, my body part made by me, and a surgeon of course. But it's my it's me it's my skin it's my it's it's my it's me. So yeah, that's why that's why I want to do it. So I just wanted to tell you all that for real. Like some points of dysphoria. Like there's I didn't just wake up and say I want to get bottom surgery. Like it's just a multitude of things that keep like yelling at me like bro. And we're in a world where we can do these things. I'm in America, I, I have the privilege, I have healthcare, where these things are an option. Um, and it's just inspiring too, hearing other trans people's stories about how they're so happy. I'm just like, yo, I can have that too. And it reminds me of when I looked at other trans people when I wasn't on T and I saw them on T and I saw them with muscle and I saw them looking like this and I was like, I can have that too. And now I have this too and I'm so grateful, happy. I love it. So just imagine everything I want I can get and if this, I, I, you're seeing, the way that you're seeing me, I didn't look, always look like this, I didn't always sound like this, but I wanted this and I went after it and I got it and I'm so grateful for how I look, which is, I'm telling you, I get a little bit sad pre-surgery because like I love how I look so much and I do a lot to maintain this physique and you know what I mean? Like I, I care about looking just strong, feeling strong and all that. So it's kind of sad, but then again, I think I'll be fine. Um, muscle memory is the thing. Every time I went through a surgery, and when I went back to the gym, my body adapt. My body woke up so quickly. Like in the next, like maybe a week of working out, I'm already back. My muscles are already popping again, so I'm not tripping on that. But yeah, I just know that bottom surgery for sure is gonna do it. After that, obviously I'm done. There's nothing else to do. I could just live and and be the the man that I want to be. 
to the world and not have to trip or think about it anymore. Like I don't have to think about my existence, the fact that I'm lacking something. Or, and it's weird because I also don't think I'm lacking in the sense that like I'm not enough. I know I'm enough, but it's like, you get what I'm saying? That's why it's conflicting because me wanting bottom surgery is basically saying that I don't have, like I'm lacking, which is like kind of, like it's 50, 50% true and false because yes, I'm lacking because I do want something else, but at the same time, I'm also full right now. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? The trans experience is very real, different, not linear, as I'm sure much of the human experience for anyone, regardless if you're trans, cis, in the middle, on the side, whatever. But yeah, I hope this helps people understand because I needed to speak about this because I sometimes didn't question myself. Like, if I'm having questions and I'm having doubts i don't want to call them doubts but just like trying to picture an alternate an alternate to just me saying yes i want to surgery. like what if i don't want it what if i don't need it blah, blah, blah. it's normal and it's important and yeah okay i'm gonna get off here because i'm blanking out and i think i've said enough and this this conversation that i've had to you has helped me a lot. I needed to just speak my mind and understand what I was going through and share and hopefully me unpacking my own thoughts and my own worries and aspirations and experiences. And yes, 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 I hope it helps someone because I don't just, po I post this stuff for me, yes, but I also post this for people in the same position as me that are also seeking the things I'm seeking and need this type of realness so yeah i love y'all if y'all need help i'm sorry ask me if i can be of assistance ask god ask yourself but it's not easy yo. it's not easy yo. it's not but here i am i don't know this is my life I don't know. This is my life, bro. I seem to be on the right path. I feel like I'm on the right path. The way that my life is lifing. It's really giving what it's supposed to be giving. And I feel like I'm representing for the black queer girlies. Black trans, black queer trans. Because I'm like queer, but I'm really black and trans. Like that's. But I guess queer, because I'm like. I'll consider myself pansexual or bisexual. I used to. I literally knock the term pansexual. I'll consider myself bisexual. Because I like everybody. Bisexual means two or more. Like, I don't care. Does that make sense? So that, make, that makes me queer, right? Because queer people just don't. Not that we don't care, but like, yeah, we don't. I think, or is, I thought queer was just an umbrella term for anything LGBTQ+. Like, you can be lesbian and be queer. You don't, you don't have to be bi and be queer. You don't have to be bi to be queer. Anyways, I'm a trans bi queer person. Does that work? <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna get off here for real. Also, the biggest thing I'm worried about not having estrogen is I hope I don't melt male pattern bald. I feel like I'm balding, bro. Am I balding, y'all? I think it's also just placebo. But like, I mean, my hairline is definitely more pushed back than what it was when I was like 17, 18. Because like, I had baby hairs. And I also wasn't on testosterone. But like, looking at my mom, she's not balding. Looking at my dad, he's bald. So... If I only have testosterone, it's giving bald. But the medical system, big pharma, I might have to use y'all for them baldness pre uh, preventers. <laughs> I was about to say presenters. I might have to use y'all for them baldness preventers, baby. For them baldness presenters. Preventers. You understand, right? Anyways, God forbid, I don't, I don't want to be bald. But I feel like I'll be sexy bald. But like when I'm like 40 or something, like I'm 24, bro. Mm mm. But yeah, I'm growing on my hair, y'all. Can you tell? It looks a little crazy because I'm in like the weird, awkward phase where it's just like the curls are starting to curl. And also, I have this ball spot right here. It's like a birthmark, I think. Like, it's just been there. Like, my hair is just thinner right here. I don't know if it, or actually, no. Yeah, this is just, I've always had this. If you look at like my little kid pictures, when I'll get braids, this section right here is always just be like that. So I think it's a birthmark. 
but it looks fear man when it's like like you can't really tell it just looks coming i want braids y'all see that would be clean huh but yeah i gotta i gotta have hair to get braids so, or twists or something so that's what we're doing right now but no i'm not balding i just think that my hair i went on tea and my hair started to look more male patterned but yeah, I'm not editing. I'm not gonna edit this video at all. There's no more reason to. Nothing's popped out and spooked y'all in the middle of this. And this is just a necessary talk that I feel like needs to be this long. So for real, later y'all. Good night. Good morning. Be safe out there. Just understand that even the people that you see that have it all figured out, we don't have it all figured out. We're really just trusting the process and like going with it. That's all I can tell you because I'm. I don't have all the answers, but I know a little something. All right, bye for real, y'all. Appreciate y'all.